Hello, today I wanted to show you how I use a stitch called Even Count Peyote Stitch in order to wrap a crystal point and turn it into a pendant that you could then put on a necklace or whatever you choose to do with it afterwards. So let's get started. So let's take a look at our supplies. First of all, obviously I have this crystal point that I'm using. It's a green amethyst. I picked it up at a gem and rock show. I'm really excited to make something out of it. I have seed beads, Miyuki Delica seed beads in size 11. I have a size 12 beading needle. I have dental floss, which is basically a waxed, waxed cord. And that's what I'm gonna use to wrap around the crystal and make it sticky basically. And then I'm also using a fire line and a six pound weight for the weaving. Okay, so to prepare your crystal to put the beadwork on it, you're gonna cut a four to five foot piece of your dental floss or waxed thread, um, which is basically what dental floss is. And you're going to wrap it around the crystal. So wrap over the tail, you'll see here, I'm wrapping over the tail so it doesn't come undone. And I wanna make a nice even layer around the crystal. Um, as wide as I want my beaded setting to be. Um, so this is how wide I want mine to be. You might want yours to be not quite so wide on your crystal, or maybe you want it to cover more of your crystal. Um, and then basically you want about two layers. The main thing is to keep it even. You don't want it bulking up underneath your beadwork. Um, I like this technique for setting a crystal as opposed to using glue um, because that way it doesn't affect the sort of clarity of the crystal. I feel like, you know, it, it's more pure that way. Um, if you then take your tail end and just sort of melt it, warm it up and melt it so it sticks to the rest of the waxed thread, um, it will, once you work with it more, it becomes quite sticky and you can get it to mold into the shape you want it to be. And now we're ready to start beading. Okay, so the technique we're gonna use is called an even count peyote stitch. And the first thing I'm gonna do is pick up a stopper bead. I'm using purposely a different color so you don't get confused. And you slide your stopper bead down towards the tail end of your beadwork, leaving a three to four inch tail, and then you loop around and come back up through that bead. This is just to keep your beads from falling off. In the end, we'll slide it off and we don't need it. So for my particular bead, or crystal that I'm using, I know that I want to use 12 beads, but you're gonna have to eyeball this um, depending on the crystal you have, but you want an even number of beads. And so what I'm gonna do is I slide on, I'm sliding on 12 beads, and then what you wanna do is measure. You want it to go a little bit over the edges of the wax thread that you put on there. So I have my 12 beads, and now I'm gonna start my first row. So I pick up a bead, I skip the first bead, and take my needle through the second bead, working back towards the stopper bead. And that's gonna give me this little triangle looking thing like this. And then I pick up another bead, skip the next bead, and put my needle through the following bead. And when I pull that through, I'll have another triangle looking thing. And then I pick up another bead and again, skip a bead and go through the following bead. And continue like this down the line. Now you may have a wider setting, you may have a smaller setting, depending on the size of your crystal. Again, I skip a bead. Um, but just always make sure that you're starting out with an even number of beads. And I'm going through again, skipping a bead, bringing my needle through the following bead. There we go, starting to get a nice little weaving here. And then one more for this row. I pick up a bead, skip a bead, 
and then come through that final bead, avoiding the stopper bead. And there I have my first row of even count peyote stitch. Now I'm going to work back in the opposite direction and I'm going to pick up a bead and then you're going to go through the beads that are up. So now that we've done that first row, you have beads that are sort of sticking up and we're going to weave through the spaces in between those up beads basically. So I've added a bead, going through that next up bead, pulling that tightly so it sits well and it should look like this. I pick up another bead and I'm going to go through that next up bead. like so. And I pick up another bead, go through the next up bead, like so. And you keep working down the line in this fashion. I really enjoy peyote stitch because once you get going, especially on a project like this, it could be really mindless and you can sort of meditate and enjoy the process because you don't really have to think too much, especially with this one because we don't have any pattern we're following or anything. It's just the one color. So you keep working that way. I pick up a bead. I go through the next up bead. And these rows will each have six beads. You're adding six beads per row. So I go through there. And now I'm ready to add another row, working in the opposite direction. So I will flip over my work so that I'm not having to bead in a different direction. I'm always beading in the same direction. I just flip my work to get where I want to be. So I pick up a bead, go through the next up bead and then in the previous row. And I'm just going to carry on this way, weaving back and forth, creating a length of peyote stitch until I get a piece that's big enough to wrap around my crystal. Um, and I'll keep checking once it gets longer to, to make sure that I haven't made too many rows. Um, but when you get to a place where you're about two rows away from being able to go all the way around your crystal, you're going to come back here and then we'll talk about closing up that loop around your crystal. So I'm going to keep beating. You keep beating on your side until you have a nice long peyote stitch snake that you can wrap around your crystal point. Okay, I'll see you back here. Okay, so here I am, I have finished my piece. Well, I've gotten it pretty long, I haven't finished it yet. Um, but I have a decent length piece and now I'm going to wrap it around my crystal and see where I am. So here we go. So you want the up beads of one side to be able to slot into the down beads of the other side like a zipper. Um, so you always wanna finish on a row that's going to slot into the other side's um, down beads. And I'm looking at this now, and I realize I need to add two more rows. Um, and I'm holding it really tight. You don't want it to be loose. You want to stretch it as much as you can to make it tight um, when you're setting your crystal. So I know I need to add two more rows. And this is just going to take a little practice getting the exact amount but eyeball it, don't be afraid to stop and take beads out, add beads in, um, you just want it to be tight. So now I have the right amount, I'm holding it very tight. They don't need to be quite touching yet, I just need to know that they can touch if I push it tight enough. And then I'm going to take my needle and I'm gonna come, I'm coming out of the down bead of my last row and I'm going through the up bead of the other side and then I'm going to go through the up bead 
of the fur side and zigging zagging across go through the up beat on the other side so basically you're making like a zipper so you're going to go zigzag back and forth up beat on the fur side and then up beat on the second side and then these two sides start to come together like a zipper is my favorite part it's just so satisfying to see them come together in this way so i keep going back and forth like that and again you really want to experiment with your um with your sizing you want it to be tight when you pull it together like this that's what's holding it in place and the wax thread um holds everything together basically because it's sticky and it creates friction underneath the pieces so I'm going back and forth like this and now I'm on my final bead I'm gonna flip it around and then I'm gonna go back through to secure So there, that's looking good. I'm making sure everything feels tight. And now I'm going to weave all the way back across just to make sure this joint is strong. And basically just weaving into my work to create tension. Um, now I'm finding two beads which are next door to each other. I picked the wrong one there. It's kind of hard to see with these shiny beads. So I have these two beads which are next door to each other. And I'm going to wrap around these two beads to create tension between them. So that's one loop. I'm going to make another loop around. And then I'm going to just weave in a little bit more to make sure my thread is very secure and there's plenty of tension. And I'm gonna make another little loop around. And then next I'm just gonna take my needle up a couple of beads and then I can clip that thread and I'm done with it. Um, following that, I will thread my tail um, from the other side where we began our work and I will take that thread and thread it through the beads on the opposite side of the join and do the same exact technique, finding um, beads to wrap around and anchor it. And then I clip everything, and when you're finished with that, meet me back here. Okay, so now we have finished weaving in all of our threads, and we have this beautiful looking piece but we can't do anything with it unless we create a way to add it to a chain or a necklace. Um, and so to do that, we're gonna create a loop. So I have a new thread. I am going to anchor it into my work by finding two beads next door to each other. And I'm gonna loop around those two beads just like we finished off the work. And this will anchor the bead. So or anchor the thread. So I found these two. I'm going to go around them two times to create some tension. And after that, I am going to weave my needle over to the opposite side of my work to just really secure that thread. So I've done my two loops. Now I'm flipping it over. I'm going to work back across the other way, going one bead at a time. Um, like I started to talk about before, you never want to force your needle through a bead. If you're trying to go through a bead and it seems tough, don't force it. Try to choose a different path to go because it would just be heartbreaking to snap one of your beads at this point. And they are made out of glass, so too much tension will just crack the bead and then 
you will just be sad because you, it's really impossible to go back at this point and replace a bead. You would have to start over um, or have a major sort of hole in your work. Um, so just find a careful path to go down. So I'm working my way across to the other side. Um, I know that I want my, my mount, my loop to be um, in the center. And so I'm trying to find a place where I'm going to start my new row. But first of all, I'm working all the way to the other side. And then I'm going to come back around and start my new row of peyote stitch, which will then become the loop. So here I am, one more working in the opposite direction. And now I'm going to come back in the right direction. So I've chosen to leave two rows of beads on the outside um, before I start my peyote stitch. So I've picked up a bead, I've come out of the one bead, I know it's kind of hard to see with these metallic beads, but and then I skip a row and I'm going through the next bead. And then I pick up another bead, I skip a row and come up through the next bead that's in line with the previous bead I've added. Like so. I pick up another bead. And I skip a bead, skip a row, and come up through that row like that. And I have three beads there. And now I am going to work back in the opposite direction. So I'm going through that last bead, which is now my up bead. And then I go through the next up bead. And I go through the next up bead. And from here on out, it's just like working peyote stitch. It's just finding that initial place where you want to create this loop that can sometimes be tricky because you want it to be centered and even across. So I'm just working back and forth in this manner until I have enough peyote stitch built up so that I could create a loop, which is approximately a quarter of an inch. That's what I'm going with for this particular project. I'm using a cord that's, I guess, about four millimeters wide. Um, and so this loop seems big enough for me, about a quarter inch. So I'm just going to keep building up my loop, um, which is just boring for you to watch. So I'm going to leave you to build up your loop and then meet me back here and I will show you how to anchor that loop and then we'll be just about done. So. Okay, so here we are back with this nice little flap we've created attached to the crystal. Um, and you should be really proud of yourself because we're so close now. So we're now going to attach this little flap. You want to find the bead that is mirroring the bead that you started this row of peyote stitch with. So I'm over, I'm down a few beads um, depending on how flat or loopy you want your loop to be. Um, and then I am going through bead and then I come up through the down bead on my flap. Tricky to see here with these beads. I'm sorry about that. And then I go through, skip a bead and go through the next bead on the crystal stitch part. And then I come up through the down bead on the flap. 
and then I skip a bead on the crystal stitched part and I go through the next bead like so and then I come up through the down bead on the flap and then I skip a row and go through the next bead on the crystal stitch like so and then I'm going to work back in the opposite direction um, so that I can secure that again so first I'm going to get my needle just back across and then I will work my way back through those same beads one more time just to really secure that loop because that's where a lot of tension ends up being on your piece so you want to make sure it's very strong so I'm going back across and then when I do get to that other side I will work back through the original joint join where I've joined the two together okay here we are and now we'll work back across so much about this project is feeling your crystal sort of you know just sizing it for what you're going to do it's very intuitive in a lot of ways um, because there's no pattern here. Everyone's gonna have a different size crystal. Um, you can make patterns in the peyote stitch. You can, you know, make it bigger or wider. You can make your loop bigger. It's all up to you. I'm just giving you the basics here and I hope you will take them and run with it and do like beautiful, crazy things. So here I am, I have come all the way back through that original joint to really secure it. And then once I'm done with that, I will weave my thread back into the work, anchor it again by looping around two beads and securing it. And then I could clip everything. Okay, so here we are with our finished piece. I've clipped all the strings, woven everything in, and I haven't really decided what I'm gonna do with this necklace, but for now I have this nice cord um, that matches my crystal. So uh, for now, I will probably just do something like that. You could also make a beaded chain to go with it. You could make a metal chain with it. Um, there's so many options and I hope you will find some useful knowledge here to be able to make some gorgeous things for yourself. If you like this tutorial, I hope you will subscribe and watch some of my other videos. I have lots of uh, cool ideas coming up for the spring that I can't wait to share with you. And uh, thanks for watching and sticking around. All right, bye.